everybody. Nice to see you all. And good morning to those who are following us online. Right. Um, we're going to have the notices given out at the end of the service. Uh, yeah, so I'm just what Sue's doing baby feeding duty. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Okay, and it's welcome back to Hazel Scar, who's going to lead us in our worship. Good morning, Hazel. And over to you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> it's still Easter, so there's... Follow our service sheet together. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We pray together, Almighty God, you bring to light things hidden in darkness and know the shadows of our hearts. Cleanse and renew us by your Spirit that we may walk. Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted the promise of resurrection life. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love bring us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The collect together. Risen Christ, faithful and shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. 
Readings taken from Acts, chapter 4, beginning at verse 5. The next day the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so was Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and other of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd, and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen, I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray that as uh, our Father hears our voices this morning, we may now take time to open our hearts and to hear his voice to each one of us. Amen. Amen. Both those passages of scripture that we've heard, you can hear running through them, because of what we know uh, ourselves, that there is a strong theme of love and dedication there. Especially through, of course, the passage in John's Gospel, The Good Shepherd. And there's so much in those relatively few verses, but perhaps because that passage is just so familiar to us, 
it's easy to miss things. Jesus is continuing to speak to the Pharisees who've just taken him to task over a healing he's done. But as so often when Jesus speaks, you feel sure that he, what he's saying is intended for everyone who is listening, and particularly at that time for his disciples. He emphasizes who he is. He foretells what will happen to him and that he will go through that willingly for those he loves. And he also talks of his future church with himself as the shepherd who is both leader and carer. I am the good shepherd, he says. And those listening, of course, at that time will have easily understood him contrasting a true shepherd who'd usually been born in those days to the job, as, if you remember, were both Moses and David, um, contrasting that with a hireling, a casual worker with no commitment. A true shepherd was hard and actually rather dangerous. They were totally responsible for those flocks. I wonder if you knew that if a flock was scattered and sheep were killed as a result of marauding animals, the shepherd had to account for the truth of this to the owners by producing the carcasses. It's even laid down as a law in the book of Amos. It says, if it is torn by beasts, let him bring it as evidence. So they had a hard life in their job and a hard life with their employers. Again, if robbers came to steal from the flock, the shepherd was expected to stand and fight to defend it. In so doing, some of them did lose their lives. So again, you see the imagery of himself that Jesus is using. Jesus' imagery was also speaking, of course, of what was going to come in those days of the first Easter, which they were approaching. I wonder what the Pharisees and some others were making of all this. Were they understanding the truth underlying the imagery he was using it? If not, of course, perhaps they got even more perplexed when Jesus went on saying, I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. That's such a powerful comparison, isn't it? And I would guess it upset the Pharisees even more. But it speaks of an incredibly close relationship that Jesus saw between himself and his true followers in his future church as well. Later in this same chapter, which we didn't reach, he's recorded as saying, the Father is in me and I am in the Father. That's very close. Jesus is illustrating the tight bond between the good shepherds and their flocks. And later Paul speaks of this in a different way when he says, anyone who loves God is known by him. But Jesus is also thinking forward. The flock of what he's speaking is the future church of Christ which he knows will also always be open to attack, not just from the outside, but also from inside by false shepherds, bad leadership. He's emphasizing that it's essential that the church's true leader must only ever be himself, Jesus Christ. There's something else here that the Pharisees will not have been happy to hear. 
He goes on, I have sheep that do not belong to this fold, or sheep pen, as the translation read said. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. There's loads we could say about this, but you'll be glad to know I'm not going to go into all that. Time is very short, but it clearly speaks of the Jews having to accept that they were not exclusive. The message of Jesus would be taken to the Gentiles too. Jesus would gain non-Jewish followers and so his church would spread across the world. The most important thing for us today is that really precious truth which as Christians we know well within our hearts. It is only in Jesus Christ that the world can become one. One flock with one shepherd, brothers and sisters in the love of Christ. There is a lovely story that I discovered. It's told by a guy some of you might have heard of, I hadn't before this. His name was Egerton Young, a missionary and indeed the first missionary to the Red Indians, as we term them. An old chief listened to him speak of the love of God and of God as a father. And that chief said to him, we never thought about the great spirit as father. We heard him in the thunder, we saw him in the lightning, and we were afraid. When you tell us that the Great Spirit is our Father, that is very beautiful. And after a pause, he went on and he said, Did you say that he was your father? And Young replied, Yes. And the old chief is said to have exclaimed, Then you and I are brothers. He was right. We know we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. In our Father God, we cherish his undying love. But we know that love always demands a response of some kind, and we know it can be refused. Jesus knows that, of course. He has experience and to spare of rejection. But as his church... We are his bride. From the Christian, there should be only one response to his love. Acceptance, grateful acceptance, and obedience. As he laid down his life for us, so we are committed to living our lives in love for others. So, however many times we've heard the words from today's gospel before, it provides a reminder of the celebrations we've had of Easter, but also a reminder that our Lord's sacrifice on that cross demands from us more than a celebration. Alleluia, Christ is risen, we say. But is he? risen indeed, as we also cry. For that to be true, he must be shown to be risen in our lives through our ability to demonstrate his life within us and by that love we show to others in his name. Over what is now a rather long lifetime in the church, I have met a number of good shepherds genuine expressions of Christian faith and of how people care for each other. Any church family that gathers to worship together should always, always be seen at the heart of that caring. I wonder if you remember when cuts were first being made to nursing homes by local authorities and they coined the phrase care in the community. But it wasn't theirs first, was it? 
That's what the church has always been doing. Care in the community. It's how we demonstrate God's love for all. Love is at the heart of our faith. So as you walk around in this community, keep watch with keen and loving eyes of a good shepherd and look out for the lost and the needy sheep, always ready to bring love's, God's love and care in the name, of course, of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now stand and affirm together the importance of our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth are made. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, Genevieve has tested the weight of the pebble ball, which has an enormous number of pebbles in it today, and reckons she can bring it up for us again. You're very good at this, aren't you? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we lift up this symbol of people's prayers and care for others in placing these stones. We ask that that will always be our main, main purpose in life as Christians, as followers of you. And we pray that as you have heard all the prayers represented here and know all the people therefore, that you may bless and keep them, and that in some way, at some time, you may be able to make yourself known to each one. Amen. Amen. The response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. As we come to pray, let us be still. Let us feel the presence of God amongst us. Let us hear the shepherd's voice speaking to us. Let us sense our resting in God's outstretched palms. We pray for the church and for the leaders of the church. Holy and gracious God, we pray that church leaders the world over will lead and encourage congregations in their faithful outliving of their lives as witness to your suffering, death and resurrection. As they speak truth to power, we pray that they will lead their flocks to see that their daily walk in life is a walk with Jesus, the shepherd whose voice is often crowded out in the daily living, but whose voice is always present. May God's people be enriched to live closely to your ways day by day, that others will be strengthened and inspired to follow. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our bishops, for Stephen and Gavin, and Olivia as she comes to the end of her office. We pray for those who serve us here at St Hugh's, and give thanks for the open and encouraging ministry to us of those who have retired but continue to serve. 
We pray especially for Jean and Mark as they work amongst us and for those who lead us week by week, especially Hazel who leads us this morning. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the world and its leaders. We thank you for those who seek to serve unconditionally, who honour everyone in their society and seek peace and reconciliation ahead of war and injustice. Patient God, we pray that your ways will break through and that those places where there is incessant unrest, war and famine will become touching places of your kingdom. We pray this morning especially for the Middle East, for the Palestinian people and for Israelis, for Syria, Yemen, Libya and Iran. God of peace, we pray that your word will be heard and that peace will be close. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We come to pray for our parish, for all who live and work and visit. We remember those who work at the Horton Hospital, at our local schools, and those who are establishing new routes on the new estates being built around us. We pray today for those living in Brantwood Rise and in Queensway. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Healing God, Jesus said, I know my sheep, they follow me, and they will never be lost. I give them eternal life. May those who are unwell come to know the truth of these words, even in their hardest moments. We remember all those who are unwell, those known especially to us, and those from our congregation. We pray for Bethany, Janet, Georgie, Sue, and Summer. We pray that they and those who support them will be blessed and know your comfort. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of grace, we remember those who have died, their families and those who mourn their passing. Especially today, we hold up those mourning the death of Margaret, of Pat, of Steph. May they too come to know your comfort and be assured of God's promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Stand for the peace. <clears throat> the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Lord be with you all. Please share that together.
hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice of sin. And now we give you thanks, because in his victory over the grave, a new age has dawned. The long reign of sin is ended, a broken world is being renewed, and humanity is once again made whole. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, do you do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts of Christ, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join your eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. In times of hope, in times of trouble, in times of sorrow, in times of praise, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Our Father hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. So we are one body, we are all one body, because we will share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on in him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
stars per fly When the prince of life our ransom Shed for us his precious blood Who is love will not remember Who can cease to sing his praise He can never be forgotten Throughout his eternal days On the mount of crucifixion Fountains open deep and wide Through the flood gates of God's mercy my shepherd I'll not want He makes me lie in pastures green He leads me by the still still waters His goodness restores my soul And I will trust in you trust in you alone for your endless mercy follows me your goodness will lead me home he guides my ways in righteousness and he anoints my head darkest path 
I will not fear the evil one For you are with me And your rod and staff Are the comfort I need to know And I will trust in you So we pray together. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God, the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with those you love and pray for, now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Can you sing again? Your goodness will lead me 